Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. My name is Brandy, if you're new here. This is the ch uh, my channel, Sewing Back. And this is the last two week pantry, summer pantry challenge. And um, last night, <laughs> We had a huge hiccup the, for the first day of starting our starting our two weeks off, and that was I did a from scratch chicken pot pie, and I put it in my big cast iron uh, skillet, only to put it in the, I did it, you'll see all that, put it in the oven, and when the timer went off, it wasn't cooked, and I noticed my oven was not hot, and so, I was pretty discouraged last night to find out that my right at five month old z oven, this is my second one, this is the one they sent me to replace the other one I had that um, had a manufacturer defect, um, <clears throat> stopped working, the ovens, the, uh, the bottom element stopped working. So we got creative. I was. John got creative because I was pretty devastated after I'd worked so hard all day. I was so excited about it. And luckily, it's not luckily, it was a God thing because I honestly thought about putting it just in a casserole dish and putting the pie crust on top because I do not have a pie pan that's deep enough that when you make that filling to make just one pie. And something just kind of nudged me <laughs> to use my skillet. And I thought, I'm just gonna do it. I did it when I was videoing it. And um, I truly believe, you can people can think whatever they want, but I, I have no doubt it was God. And yes, God cares about those mundane, trivial things. And I don't know why, but I did it in that pan. And the reason that that was such a blessing was because that pan has a big cast iron lid. And the way that it ended up cooking was on our Weber griddle. And for the last part of it to brown up the top, our broiler does work. <laughs> and John put it under the broiler just to get it toasty on top. And I just want to tell you that that was the most fabulous, fabulous, <laughs> the most fabulous chicken pot pie I have ever eaten in my life. And it's not just me, everyone. Even I have sons who don't particularly like chicken pot pie, even though one of my sons requested it. And they were all like, I think this is like, I like chicken pot pie because this is what it's supposed to taste like. So that was just a quick recap. We're on to day two. Um, this is night two. And um, the update is I spoke with Z-Line today. I, uh, did some things that they asked me to do and I have done all that and sent that to them and they are going to be sending us new parts for the messed up parts and they are going to send a um, Z-Line professional service person who is going to come and put said parts in and make my oven work and um, I'm thankful it is very inconvenient when you're in a pantry challenge to lose such a critical piece of equipment, particularly when I have already planned. The rice starting to get heated up. I've got my broiler getting heated up. Um, I've got my small cookie scoop for the meatballs. I doubled this recipe. If you go to the link that was in the update for the summer challenge, and I will also include it here in this week, in case you want to use this recipe at a different time. Um, this recipe and her, um, on her blog, she gives you the ability to um, add to so that you can have uh, bigger portions or you know, you can double it, triple it, whatever. I have chosen to double it because I really like, I love to use um, lean, grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Um, and I, that's what I have purchased from my local rancher and what I have in my, um, freezer and what I have found when you get real grass, um, fed grass finished beef, it tends to be really lean. And so it can kind of change the texture a little bit. And I really like adding that pork. So I did a pound of, um, my plain 
no no season or anything ground pork that I got also from a different rancher down in South Georgia um, to my beef and I've already kind of incorporated that so that's why my if you see me do this and you're like well my recipe only said an egg or whatever it's because I have I have added to it so I have my three pounds of meat here it calls for three pounds if you're doing it this way ground beef like I did two pounds of ground beef to one pound of pork all right this then I have um, oh, now I need to put in my egg. This is three of my chicken eggs. And I need to put in my breadcrumbs. And I'm using Panko Plain, the gluten-free. That's what I have. I'm still going through <laughs> gluten-free stuff. Um, then I'm supposed to put in, I did all my seasoning in here. So it called for three-fourths a teaspoon of garlic powder, three-fourths a teaspoon of pepper, one and a half teaspoons of salt. So that's what I have in here. It calls for three tablespoons of parsley. Uh, if you have fresh, you could do that. I have, um, that seems like a lot, but hey, we're going with it. <laughs> and I have about a third of a cup of kind of minced up onion here. And so we're going to put this in. And because I'm using my boiler, um, move this. I'm going to use my hands. I want to go ahead and get my pans ready. I'm going to have two different pans because I know this is going to make a lot of meatballs. But I'd rather use my cast iron and my stone pan than my USA pans because I'm, I'm just not sure about having them under the broiler that long if that's recommended and I don't feel like looking it up so we're going with this and these are your best tools are your hands and that's how easy this is to mix up this one does not say you have to let it sit in the refrigerator the way the Betty Crocker one does and I ain't got time for that today I have had a day And I will tell you, I did use, because the gluten-free uh, panko is, it's more like the little, it's almost like little pellets or whatever. Um, I did almost use a full cup instead of three-fourths a cup. So, just something I've kind of learned sometimes when you're using gluten-free stuff. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So, I'm going to wash my hands. And I'm going to speed up the next part, and that's just going to be making the meatballs using my one-inch scoop. And we're going to see how many we can fill it with these two pans. <laughs> if you are following that recipe, you're going to say, hey, Brandy, you're supposed to put that in a slow cooker. <laughs> yes, I know that it calls for that, and I ain't got time for that, so... <laughs> We're gonna make ours on the stove top. And if the sauce is not to my family's liking, I'm not gonna pour it over my meatball. They can do that individually. So that's how I'm doing it. <laughs> okay guys, it just went off. I'm gonna pull one out and I'm gonna use my thermometer so I can test my meat. Can tell you I peaked once and it's hot <laughs> in there. Whew, it's hot. Pull this out. Honestly, I'm just gonna do it like this. Let's see. Probably not the most efficient way to do it. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Turning that bad boy off. They're done. They're registering about 185. 
So that means they are done, they're cooked. Yay, winning. Okay, so let me take this one out. My rice still has about 10 minutes. Just get it. Okay, guys, um, my broccoli's finishing up, so I don't know how spicy it's going to be, so I'll put a little rice with it, but I wanted to show you that meatball is, uh-oh, sorry, that meatball is fully cooked. As I said, I took the temperature. I dipped it in the sauce because I'm not quite sure what to think about it, so... We're gonna taste it and see what we think. Not bad. My guess is the meatballs would be more if you did it in the slow cooker. They're gonna take on more of that flavor. Um, personally, for me, for my family, and I probably don't want a ton of that sauce because it does have a lot of sugar in it and that's something I have to be careful with. Um, and I don't like a lot of spice. So being able to control how much that is, I actually like making it this way. So it's not bad. Um, the meatballs are really good. And matter of fact, I'm, that's even faster than the last way I did them. So try broiling them for eight to 10 minutes. Very happy with that. So I give this recipe a thumbs up. I won't see you tomorrow night for dinner and I can't bake anything for breakfast. <laughs> so I don't have anything like that. We have like lunch bread and stuff like that. I have lunch bread. I have bread and like sandwich meat and stuff. So we're, we're eating that and we'll eat at church tomorrow night and I will see you Thursday night. I'm thinking with my leftover broccoli I might end up doing a broccoli soup with some corn fritters on, on the um, Weber instead of the fish um, because it's going to be a weeknight and if I have to like fry the fish and stuff like that, that's going to be a lot more labor intensive and that's something I could do on the weekend. I don't necessarily want to do and you know on a, on a weeknight. So um, we'll find out on Thursday. I'll see you then. Bye. Okay guys, so here's the great Aldi haul. The red onions, I need a sharp cheddar for the soup. I also got the medium cheddar because it takes a lot of cheddar. I picked this up because the last time I was there, I couldn't find any shredded Parmesan. So I picked that up. The boys like these Gouda cheese sticks. Bananas, tea, the kettle chips, the half and half, and the bone broth. And that was, uh, I think that was 25, 43, something like that. So that's my Aldi's haul. That's the only uh, grocery shopping I've done so far. Um, I'm into day four of this two week challenge. And like I said, I will have to go to the grocery store and get some things because I am I have gaps at this point that I need help with. And a lot, some, a lot of that is the dairy. I do need to figure out something for breakfast. Um, we've had, we had like some bagels I found we've been eating eggs but that's not always convenient uh, we did have some yogurt we're almost out of yogurt I think we may have one more day's worth of yogurt and tomorrow we don't have to worry about breakfast because the school is providing it for us for senior breakfast so anywho um <laughs> that's the haul and um I will show you dinner in just a bit
Hey guys, Brandy here. It's uh, I'm in the kitchen. It's Friday um, evening, <laughs> and um, I'm going out to my greenhouse. <laughs> I am feeling a little under the weather, <laughs> and um, I think I'm just tired, but I don't know. <laughs> and um, so I'm just kind of taking it easy. I am not cooking dinner tonight. My one son is working concessions at his school and that's kind of team sports they do that for the different sports teams they work concessions and then those those sports teams work when basketball's in and so it's kind of a trade-off he, he was super excited because the seniors get to cook um, burgers and stuff for the concessions and this has not been done in many years since COVID so they were so excited and so I don't need to feed him. The other one is working and cared for, and we have plenty of leftover um, cream of broccoli soup and our, I'm gonna call them corn pancakes. They did not quite, I, I did not love that recipe. I wish I would have just made it the way I knew. So, um, but they taste, they taste delicious and you will, you really can't eat more than about two, you get full. And I think that's because it has so much protein from the eggs and stuff. But um, we have plenty of that left. And so I'm just not gonna worry about cooking dinner tonight <laughs> for the pantry challenge. We'll just heat it up. John's cutting grass with lots of grass from all the rain uh, that needs cutting. And I have, I want to succession plant and I need to replant rutabagas since they got eight. And um, I just wanna go out there I'm going to listen to a podcast with Joel Sal Salatin <laughs> about food freedom. <laughs> and um, I just, I'm just going to, I'm going to work. I'm not going to video or anything. So I just wanted to let you know what was going on. I'm hoping and planning to be back in the kitchen tomorrow. Hey guys, Brenda here. Welcome back to the pantry challenge. <laughs> it is Saturday afternoon. And for dinner tonight, we are doing um, one of my chicken stir fries that um, I had gotten a deal. I think it was like a one pound package of thinly sliced chicken breast. And so I, I cut it up and I marinated it in a, I think it's a sweet chili sauce. Let me see. Um, oh, a, it's, a thai, it's a Thai chili sauce. Um, and, and so I really should have had another pound of meat, but that's just what I had. So I did it. Um, so I went, I needed to run to Walmart because you see over there, I needed a bigger pot. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make some salsa, um, using some Mrs. Wages. I like to use that kind of as like a Rotel and I've got all my tomatoes in that pot, but I can't put my other ingredients or anything. So I just went ahead and I bought one of those stainless steel kind of stock pots. You can actually can in that one. Um, so I guess now I have two water bath canners, but it was like 24 bucks. Um, so that's not part of my grocery haul, <laughs> but I needed to go do that. I also had to get some pet food. So while I was there, I just picked up kind of what I needed. Um, I still don't feel great like I don't I don't have a fever none of that stuff just don't feel kind of feel out of sorts I don't know any other way to describe it and have a headache kind of have a headache and I'm tired so um, I'm like well I'm just gonna pick up what I need for the next few days while I was there and um, just in case if I am getting something I'm we're kind of set because I knew I had all the meat stuff and all that kind of stuff going. So, I this is what I got. <laughs> um, I picked up some apples and grapes. Um, like we all like that. So, um, those were the ones that were decent buys, and the and the fruit and stuff actually looked decent. Some of the stuff just didn't look great. And um, just being totally honest there. So, what I tomorrow my plan is to do. The fish fry instead of doing that baked fish dish since my oven won't work um, I'm going to do like a fish fry I when we went to the granary um, last weekend we actually got a um, hush puppy mix and um, like a fish 
uh, mix coating whatever and so I'm just gonna use those and we're gonna do that I got a bag of the tricolor slaw and I'm gonna do like a homemade coleslaw and let it sit overnight so we'll have that um, I might try to do baked potatoes um, in my Instapot. I, I used to love to bake potatoes in my slow cooker, and um, but it was more oval shape. I don't have that anymore. I just have my Instapot that has all the features. So I'm not, I haven't looked up like if I baked potatoes in my Instapot, um, how that might work. I don't know. Otherwise, I may just, I don't know yet. I don't know what I might do yet for that part of it. So, but I'm not overly worried about it either. So I've got the coleslaw for that. I ended up getting these chicken thighs. This was $3.76 a pound. So this, I'm gonna actually cut these up into bite-sized pieces and add them to my chicken marinade I have over here so we have enough meat because I'm feeding five people tonight. So um, I bought some mushrooms to go with the stir fry. I was out of carrots. I'm not grayed up a carrot, but I like to have carrots on hand. And then we just had uh, the cheddar broccoli soup for the last two nights, so I didn't want to stir fry broccoli. And the kids and I, they love the sugar snap peas, and I don't, I don't have any growing yet. They would bolt. They just wouldn't. It's still too hot here. So I picked these up. I think this was like the most expensive thing I bought. I got an onion because I bought those red onions at Aldi's the other day, but uh, and stir fry, I'd rather have that onion. I need more pepper jack cheese sticks because my kids eat these like they're nothing. I mean, I don't know. I got some shredded lettuce if, if it goes till Monday and I don't feel well for taco night because I didn't have any more lettuce in the house. And this is my grocery haul to carry me. Um, and this cost me um, $32.81. And the sugar snap peas were the most expensive part. It was more expensive than the chicken. Um, and those sugar snap peas were $5.98. So, um, but that's okay. The chicken was $5.75. And then the other stuff was just like normal priced or whatever. So that's my big grocery haul. <laughs> um, I haven't even really in my head gotten past like Monday night. I know, so I know what we're doing tomorrow. I know what we're doing Monday night. And I know what we're doing tonight. Um, and then I just have to kind of look and see where I was going to sort stuff on the menu. Um, that's left. I know this is a very strange pantry challenge and I apologize for that. It's, um, but that, I think it really shows real life <laughs> because in real life things break, <laughs> things don't go as planned, people get sick, I mean things just happen. So we've made lemonade out of lemons and we're going to keep trudging forward. Um, and so anyway, I'm just trying to be transparent and show you what I got and um, and yeah, I'm not going to show you how to, how I'm, I'm just going to put the stuff on the griddle and use my rice cooker. I've done that before. And for my, I already have stocked up on rice and I'm out of broth, but, uh, last week, um, before the challenge started, I had roasted a couple of chickens and I actually used that chicken when I did the pot pie and we kept the drippings. So I'm gonna take those drippings tonight to cook my rice in. I'm just gonna add some water cause it's pretty concentrated um, since I don't have any bone broth and I didn't wanna buy any. So um, honestly, I didn't think about it until I was halfway home and that's fine. Cause it actually, that'll be much more flavorful for the rice. And um, I'm hoping the chicken dish isn't too spicy. That's. I think I thought it was like a sweet chili and it's a Thai chili. So my husband and kids will like it. I don't know if I'll love it. I also have with the sugar snap peas, I pulled last night a lot of peppers, bells, red and green out of my garden. So I'm gonna add those as well. And um, so I'll do the sugar snap peas, the mushrooms, the onion, and then the peppers. And that will be the stir fry component of it. So um, pretty easy, simple, and then 
I will show you what I do tomorrow because I don't think I've done that before on camera. And I guess that's about Here's it. Here's our stir fry from Saturday night. It was delicious. Okay, so we're making coleslaw to go with our fish fry, and you're going to need half of a cup of mayo, two tablespoons of white sugar, one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, uh, half of a teaspoon of pepper, and a fourth of a teaspoon of celery salt. I mix all this together, and then I just toss in my um, bag of the tricolor um, coleslaw mix. It's like 16 ounces, and that's how easy it is to make coleslaw. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Sunday night and our, this is the last night of the first week of the two week uh, pantry challenge. And this week has had its ups and it's, well, it's had its downs kind of, well, ups, downs all around. <laughs> it's had a little bit of everything. So, um, I, I do feel better. And so I don't know, I don't know what it was. Don't care. It's, you know, we stayed home just to be precautious from church today, just in case, you know, but now I actually feel better. I've been working, you know, I watch church at home and then I have been working on Yo. different projects. So y'all saw me earlier make my coleslaw, which is going to be for dinner. Last week, if you saw our video, what we do uh, for fun, when we went to, um, to Nora Mill Granary, I had picked up a couple of things. I picked up because I knew I was going to be doing this fish. Now, I thought I was going to be using it. We were going to do that baked fish that I had put on the menu. Um, but I knew eventually, hey, we could do a fish fry. They had this, and I thought it sounded really good. And so I was like, oh, so I picked this up. It's got that little thing there. And so it's just a seasoned fish fry mix from the granary where they milled it. And of course, if you're gonna fry fish, you gotta have some hush puppies. Plus I have used this before to like put on fried green tomatoes or okra or something like that. Um, so I just went ahead and I picked one up. I don't think it has a price, I don't remember I don't remember them costing maybe five bucks or something like that. It wasn't very much. Um, so, and what I ended up doing is I went out and yet again harvested more stuff. So, I picked a bunch of green tomatoes because if we're going to fry something, we might as well do. We don't fry very often. So, if we do, might as well be having some fried green tomatoes. Okay, here I am getting my fried green tomatoes prepared um, because Johnny has come into the kitchen to help me. He's actually frying up hush puppies right now. <laughs> and I am putting uh, the tomatoes into an egg wash and then I'm putting it into my meal. And I reserved enough of the meal mix for the fish, which is what I'm doing here. And um, this was very, very good. It was a delicious dinner. So you can see Johnny's over there frying everything up. And uh, of course the dogs, they crack me up in this. They're just always at our feet. Um, what do they say? Man's best friend. Yes, especially if man is in ki said kitchen cooking. <laughs> uh, this was such a special meal to end this first week's pantry challenge on. It was not the way we thought it was going to be, but we got it done. As you can see, a couple of my boys popped in to sneak a bite here and there. Um, and <laughs> this was really special because I had all my boys home. And that is always just does a mama's heart good when her boys come home to eat. I'll see you next week.